It was a heady time and a heady place. World War I was over, and the black troops had returned home with a new pride in having fought for their country. Harlem was a mecca that drew blacks from all over the U.S. and the West Indies. They came for better jobs and a better life. Well, it was the first time in history that the artists and the writers and the musicians had gotten together uh, in this explosion, really, of creative uh, um, output. It, it was a, a, a very bright, a very colorful uh, uh, life for me there in Harlem. Works by Lois Jones and others are celebrated here at the Smithsonian's Anacostia Neighborhood Museum in an exhibit called The Renaissance, Black Arts of the Twenties. There was a flowering of art in all forms. Listen to that roll call, will you? Must be a mighty big drum, carry that call. Well, if there ain't no old brass band to see me off, I sure got the drum part of it. <laughs> one of the interesting things, uh, one of the interesting ways in which the arts demonstrated the sense, new sense of black pride was through the focus on Africa. At one time, not very er much earlier, the sense that one's African roots, one's roots in slavery in this country were shameful and, and not to be discussed. But during the period, young artists began to consider that Africa itself had a past, a glorious past, and that Afro-Americans were not to be ashamed of that, of that background. Writing proved to be an especially persuasive genre during this time of struggle for racial equality. Leaders of the NAACP and the National Urban League, among others, used the medium to expose racial injustice, decry lynching, and promote emerging black authors. Both blacks and whites fueled the creative furor of the decade. Besides the formal network between artists, publishers, and patrons, there was an active social circuit, sometimes integrated, sometimes not. Of course, we couldn't go to the Cotton Club. You know, the whites from downtown uh, would go because they, they were, well, they called it slumming. Uh, but we could go to some of the smaller nightclubs I remember going and dancing. And, uh, of course, there was the Apollo Theater. And I remember uh, seeing um, Bojangles <laughs> and seeing him dance and what a thrill that was. The Great Depression brought an abrupt end to the dazzling period of the 20s. But the legacy of the Harlem Renaissance lives on, remembered here at the Smithsonian's Anacostia Neighborhood Museum in Washington, D.C.